Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to clear up the common confusion for JavaScript developers, the differences between .js, .cjs, and .mjs file extension. If you ever wondered which one to use, or if your import is breaking, I think you're going to get the answer from this video. If you like this video, post a like, post a comment, and don't forget to subscribe and support TapaScript. You must have seen files with these extensions already. They'll be like, .cjs, .js, .mjs. Even with modern framework like Next.js or if you're working with React project, bootstrapped with Vite, you should be able to see file extension of .mjs along with .js, JSX, etc. If you're on the TypeScript world, you would have seen like .mts. To start with, let's talk about modules. Modules are the way in JavaScript where you keep the related functionalities in one place and expose them as and when they are required using import and export functionalities. I have created an in-depth crash course on JavaScript module. You can check that out. The video link is in the description of this video. Initially, in Node.js, they used a module system called CommonJS. Using CommonJS, you had to use something called require and something called module.exports to import and export your functionalities from one module to another module. So for example, if there is a module and you want to export something from that module so that other modules can make use of it, you have to do it using module that exports. And in another module, if you have to use that, you have to first use require and then you have to use that. But with ES6, JavaScript introduced native ECMAScript modules. And thus, there are two important keywords called import and export. Then the shift started happening from .cjs file, which is like common JS module system file to .mjs file. Let us now understand by seeing the code. So I have a grid.cjs file, which is with common JS module system. So if I open this file, you can see that here, if I want the FS module, the file system module from Node.js, I have to use the keyword called require. And then if I have to export some functionalities from this module so that other modules can use it, I have to use something called module.exports. With module.exports, now I can export this grid function so that other module can require this grid function if that module also is in the common JS module system can require that the way that I have required FS over here and can start using. But with MJS, which is the most latest module system format, you don't have to use the require and the module exports. Rather, you will be using something called import and export. So in this case, the same thing where in .cgs we did require, in .mjs we will be able to do import FS from FS. You see, there is no require. Also, instead of doing module.exports, which is like more verbose, here we can use the simple export command. Here we are doing a named export because we have not used the default keyword. So now if other module want to utilize this particular grid functionality, they will just do import curly braces grid from grid so that they can get the grid functionality and invoke this function in the other module. In case of normal JavaScript, by default, the JavaScript files are treated as common JS file in Node.js. You have to remember this, but you can change that. To change that in your package.json file, you have to include something called a type. How do you do that? In your package.json file, you just add type colon module. So now, even if your file extension is just .js, as you have added type colon module, now your .js file will be treated as ES module instead of .cjs module. Okay, so that dual behavior we can see over here. Like if type is common JS in package.json, then you have to import using the require. But if you have type colon module in your package.json file, you can start using the import export, how we have seen for the .mjs file. So a couple of common questions which you want to use and why this differentiation matters. For new projects, consider sticking to ES modules because they are modern standard and your project you will be always looking for them from the forward looking perspective. So wherever you can use .mjs, stick to that. Why does this distinction matter? Because common JS and ES modules behave differently. Common JS supports, for example, synchronous imports, where ES modules support asynchronously. Now, additionally, there might be certain syntax differences that may produce a lot of runtime errors in case you are not really careful about the extension you are using and the kind of API you are using in that particular file. As we just now learned that if there is a .js file, that means a plain JavaScript file, but 
if you use type colon module into package.json file, that particular JavaScript file can have import export because it will be treated as a ES module file. Okay. Now another side of it, if you have a file with .mjs file extension, it is always treated as a ES module system file irrespective whether you have the type colon module in your package.json file or not. Okay. So don't be confused with this. With .mjs, you don't really require type colon module in your package.json file. With .js, you need type colon module in your package file if you want to adhere to ECMAScript module system, the latest and the modern one. Now, this has been picked up. The .mjs file is picked up by modern frameworks, modern libraries, modern scaffolding. For example, I have a project which is created with Next.js 15. And if I look into it, you can see this Tailwind configuration file, post CSS configuration file, next config MJS file, ESLIN config MJS file. These are all with the latest ES ECMAScript module system. It has only import and export stuff defined over here. If I go to the package JSON file of this project, you won't see type colon modules at all because it's not required if your project is handling module only with .mjs file. So I hope it is clear to you. To wrap up, understanding .js, .cjs, .mjs can save you from a lot of debugging headaches and ensure that how you understand the compatibility in your JavaScript projects. If you find this video helpful, make sure that you like and subscribe to Tapascript. For more full stack development tips, see you in the next video.